Thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Now joined by uh, the athletic director of the University of Arizona, the school that was at the center of the college athletics universe for about a week, the great Dave Hickey. Hello, Dave. Hi, Mike. Good to be with you. Appreciate it. Always, uh, always good to visit with you. The center of the universe. That's a big statement, my friend. It's a big statement, but sometimes big statements are true statements, Dave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, first of all, let's uh, let's just talk a little bit about then just uh, what's going on right now. And obviously we'll work backwards a little bit, but obviously now part of the Big 12 or at least going forward. um, How does that work, at least from a transition perspective? We were talking about that a little bit yesterday at your luncheon. But how does that how does that work just from a strategical uh, avenue, I guess? Well, uh it's a, it, again, we, we're, we've got two things going on at once here. We, we, we've got uh, this year, a proud member of the PAC 12, continue to compete, operate um, our colleagues from the different institutions and, you know, and programs are still there. Uh, you know, we need to, we want to move through that season and, and do the things that we're, we're supposed to do and compete like heck and hopefully win a lot of championships. And then at the same time, we're, you know, working towards this transition as we move from this league um, and enter as a full member into the Big 12, we've got to be prepared and ready to do that. So we have a, a transition team, uh, about 12, 13 people working on a number of different things on both those avenues, how we stay uh, engaged and involved and, and taking the right steps as we depart and leave uh, what I call a lasting impression. Um, and then how do we make a great new first impression as we walk through the door uh, this time next year as a full member of the Big 12. So lots of things happen, whether that's from the competitive side, the operational side, you know, business, travel, overall uh, cultural, studying each uh, athletic program. So we know where they kind of are financially, what uh, what goes on in their programs, how our teams slot in with all the other ones, all the programs inside of each sport. That's important. So we can evaluate, like I said, the competitive landscape. So a lot happening, pretty busy, but uh, it's a good busy. You know, it's right. gonna be a fun year. All right, let's talk a little bit about kind of the swan song of the uh, of the Pac-12. What um, you know, do you guys have anything special planned for you know some of the, you know some of these games end of the season, or is, has that been something that's been discussed? We have talked a little bit about that. Again, want to want to our goal number one is uh, look. We've been a member of this league for forty five years. Right. Uh, we, we we came in as when it was the Pac-8. The two new institutions came, Arizona and Arizona State, uh, to to come in to make it the Pac-10. And, and you'll really, again, I, as I say, we helped elevate, bring, bringing us in, helped elevate the, the Pac-10, but also that, was, that membership and that great moment really in the history of our program helped elevate our athletic programs and also our university. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll always celebrate that. We're going to look, we will look for some ways to recognize some of the moments and some of the times through there, but we got to do that in the right way, uh, depending right. on how this shakes down. We're going to do it with respectful, a lot of dignity. Uh, as, as Mike, you've heard me say this, uh, we have great colleagues, friends, you know, there's so many relationships, the rivalries, the great games, the memories our fans have, those are pretty deep. And um, you got to be, you have to, you have to walk away from those relationships the right way. And uh, as I said, that's my, my term is let's, let's walk away the right way. And then, you know, provide that lasting impression of our time uh, together and, our, and, and uh, you know, our time as a Pac-12 member. All right, let's talk a little bit about just kind of the uh, then the transition to the Big 12. So a lot of people are excited because obviously it's the, probably the best basketball conference in the country that you're going to be joining. Obviously, you preside over the uh, the most rabid fan base in on the West Coast when it comes to college basketball. That's got to be kind of a nice little natural fit right there, especially when looking at games at Fog Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas coming to McHale, et cetera. Well, there's no doubt uh, on the basketball side, this is the very best uh, basketball conference in the country. The intensity that's going to occur, the the games that will occur, um, it's going to be really an incredible scene, I believe. And, and you know, it, it's a it's different. That's part of the culture that we need to learn and be more exposed to. The Big Twelve, the intensity of those environments. You don't go into an arena half full, as right. I like to say, in the Big Twelve. Every night is like going to McHale. Every night is a full house. Now. Those folks have never been to McHale, most of them. Right. And uh, so the energy and the in, and the enthusiasm and the passion and the intensity certainly of what it's like to be in McHale will be there too. So I think we'll fit in really nicely there. But, I, but it's a super competitive environment on the basketball side. 
uh, heard this. I mean, we, this maybe sometimes gets overused, but it truly is, you know, iron sharpening iron. You, we, we go in and we compete, play some of the best teams throughout the entire year. You know, you hear this all the time. Are you ready to go to the tournament or not? You're going to be ready to go into the tournament because you've played some of the very best uh, physical, really strong um, basketball teams. So we don't walk in and say, wow, it's kind of nice to play TCU in Houston. That's all. I mean, we hadn't really experienced that. We'll be able to experience that during the regular season now. But again, I think it's great for our fan base. It uh, certainly is. Um, I think it elevates our overall ticket packages and and uh, the investment that our fans will make. And, uh, um, you know, so I'm, I'm happy about it. Looking forward to it. I know our program is. I think we have to be ready, too. This is a highly competitive environment. And uh, right. you can come out of there with uh, those teams. And it's been shown that. They don't even win the conference, but they are a very high seed. They are positioned, you know, to be final four teams and to be, you know, have the ability to compete for the championship. All right. Now, a guy like Jed Fish has to be interested in that, too, with the way that he can recruit. Obviously, he's been recruiting everywhere right now. But you also have Texas, though, in the mix right now. You're going to be playing a lot of games there. So there's definitely an interesting avenue for football as well. There is. I think it's a tremendous football conference, too, um, that, that – provides us, you know, ample opportunities to continue to get better, uh, you know, receive extended national exposure, kind of coast to coast, all the different time zones. Um, so I think it lines up very well on the football side. Um, it opens the doors for us. We'll be in Texas much more up in that upper Midwest. Um, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, it broadens our footprint. Jed has a lot of connections back east and certainly in the state of Florida. So we begin to stretch our area. Right. Now we've got to use our resources wisely and, you know, we can't be everywhere all the time, but that it does provide the opportunity for our program to grow in those areas. Look, we're always going to be very uh, focused and the West coast is going to be important to our right. recruiting right. efforts. Um, what we've built already, Jed and his team and his staff um, will want to compete in those environments still because of the great alumni bases we have, you know, the connections to parents and, and future recruits that that'll be important because we are a, a West Coast university to a degree. But I, again, I think now we we really start to think about it. It's not, we're not losing what we have. We're gaining a more national approach and a, we need to broaden and think about it that way versus just, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're, what happens? So I, I think we can continue to do the great things we've done and continue to grow in the West, but also open a lot more doors for our football program. So I'm really excited about it. I think we'll be positioned well too. You know, we've built this thing now, this is the third year, it's right. ready. Um, I, it, that is a natural, it'll be a natural step for us to put in, put ourselves in the big 12. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about jet fish and packing that stadium, by the way, right there. We got to get these people out there for sure. Now, um, when it, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the big 12, how important was it just to have that stability of that, you know, you're going to be getting the 31 seven, you're going to be on K you're going to be on linear and streaming as well. Was that kind of at the end of the day, when this all went down, that had to have been somewhat reassuring. Yeah, um, there was strong, strong interest in maintaining what we, where we were, and the partners that we had. But once that began to began to kind of you know, become very, very unstable, had to be sure that we could land in a position of stability, something that's sustainable, something that allows us to be nationally competitive, put our programs in a spot that's where we deserve to be, is to compete for championships and national championships. So you have to find that environment, and certainly. So when you use the words, you know, stability and sustainability, financial, um, that, that's critically important in the financial area. And so the media package and that stability is important. So it provides us with, um, you know, really uh, a real consistent um, mechanism for us to help fund our programs as we go forward. And, and I'm very bullish. I think it will continue to grow uh, in the environment that we're in. So All that's right. important. And then the last thing you said, it is about exposure. Hey, look, we're going to have a tremendous exposure with ESPN, Fox, the streaming opportunities that are available, the direct to consumer things. So I think our programs, people will see us, parents, recruits, our alumni base across the you know nation and world will be able to see us. Now, was it uh, when uh, he came back from the, the Apple deal, obviously, and it was all it was all streaming, essentially. And uh, President Robbins had said that, you know, we have to have some kind of linear component. Um, how big of the you know, how big was that into the decision of being able to have a linear component available? Again, I think it's an asset that is um, it, that is important in the delivery, you know, of today, currently the delivery of of content. 
of our content right. are live games, our football, our most high profile games, football, men's and women's basketball, you know, pulling those things and having those in a, in a linear space is still very important. Not to have that became problematic. We had to wrestle with that. What were the impacts of it? I'm not going to say it was the single thing um, that, that tipped it, but it was an important component because you can talk about money, you can talk about all the different things you want, but you know, having that exposure helps drive all of those things and helps our recruiting and the, and the profile of our program. So, so the, the package, you know, that, that we're able to pull together with and, and be part of with our, our big 10 part, big 12 partners, excuse me. I got a lot of bigs and for clubs. sure big 12 partners um, was very attractive to us. You know, look, the, the uh, streaming world is probably where we're all headed. Let's be frank. That's kind of a, you know, that's where this is really going to continue to move. But um, I just, you know, the, the uncertainty that when it came right down to the wire, the uncertainty and maybe the, the, the unknown was just, just too much of a, uh, of a risk that I don't think we could have all rallied around and kept together. When you, uh, when you're at the position that you are and, you know, it's just somebody like me watching from the outside, how do you deal with all, you know, like it, it seemed like there was so much reporting on here about, you know, uh, corner four sources are saying that, we're going to have a deal here the next week or vice versa, whatever the case may be. When do you follow those? Do you chuckle at them? Do you, how, how does that go? Because there was just so many, it seems like false starts from which confused, I think so many fans and you guys didn't say anything during that time. So it's not like it was just coming from you saying, we're going to get this done here this day or whatever. Yeah. Well, one, I think for me, and I know for, for president Robbins, um, that's how we like to conduct our business. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to evaluate things, do it the right way, but we're not going to, um, you know, talk about that until we can put ourselves in a position that we're going to make a decision. And, uh, you know, I don't think it serves anyone well if you can't, you know, somewhat contain the process and the decision making to get to the right spot. Hey, the chatter, um, the abundance of, uh, of, of stuff out there. Yeah, you see it, you hear it. People come into the office and tell you they send you an email or something and say, hey, I heard this. Um, you know, I, I think it drives our current media structure and, and, and the platforms that are out there. So uh, I, I don't blame anyone, I guess. I think there there is a tendency to to drive things that really aren't substantial or substantiated. Um, and, and that doesn't help the process at all. I think other agendas get involved. People start to drive it the way they want to. So I don't, I don't think that's healthy, but that's our world. So again, it's there. We, we maybe need to understand some of it, but we're still focused on a train to make a really good decision for the University of Arizona, the best decision with all the facts that we have. If we live in that other world of speculation and hypotheticals and, and, and half truths, you know, we're going to make a bad decision. And then, so we've got to, got to say, so, you know, it, it is what it is, as they say, that big time overused term, but uh, right. um, I do chuckle about some of the things, the dark rooms I've been in, um, the, the places I was traveling to, or the president <laughs> was, or, you know, heck, I, I kind of wanted to just say on a trip, Hey, I'm going to Dallas. Anybody got a good lunch spot for me? Um, just right. to see what would happen, but I didn't do that. So Maybe I didn't you should do that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's funny. I mean, I, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I was going to Dallas to fly through to go to Chicago to have business meetings. And I wondered what what if somebody tracked my tail, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was like, well, hey, we were having meetings. And we were going to the Big Ten. So, right. we're, you know, anyway, it's funny stuff like that. What's the all right. So let's talk a little bit about Brett Yormark. So Brett Yormark is obviously Big 12 commissioner. The one thing about him and again, I obviously don't know him. But the one thing about him that's impressive is that he seems to be a man of action. He came in and he said, I'm going to get my schools a raise. We're going to figure out Oklahoma, Texas, and we're going to expand and check, check, check. I mean, everything he said, he's pretty much done to this point. Yeah, the commissioner is very aggressive, very forward thinking, um, wants to push the the Big 12. And, and I think the league wanted to be pushed forward. You know, remember, it wasn't that long ago when Texas and Oklahoma left. And that really was the linchpin for all of this. That's when all of this became very unsettled and, and, and you know, not a lot of stability to it. Um, that league was 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 wavering on existence and was right. it going to come one way or the other, go somewhere else, whatever. Um, you know, so the new commissioner steps in. And again, I have great respect for Bob Bowlesby, previous commissioner, know him and and uh, the work that had been done. But I, I, again, I think the league had to really rally itself together to say, how are we going to be how are we going to keep this going? And obviously brought on some new partners that are coming in this year, new schools, um, you know, but, you know, commissioner 
the commissioner is very, very forward thinking um, in lots of different ways. Um, he doesn't come from the traditional college side, but he respects it. Um, so he, he kind of really pushes the boundaries. What can we do? We may come back in a little bit, but let's test it as far as we can. And I think that's good for all of us. So I'm, I'm looking forward to work with them. It's uh, it, it'll be an exciting time. And I think there's a lot of things in our future for all of our sports that will, uh, again, place the big 12 up on the pedestal that uh, it should be on. At the end of the day, um, was Arizona, whether it was staying, leaving, whatever the case may be with all the facts on the ground, was it prepared to make whatever move it needed to individually, or did it have to be tethered to certain schools? Where, where did that stand? Well, look, um, you know, we have great uh, respect for, our, you know, our system, our state system, the schools in it. I think you have to respect that uh, it, at the same time, you know, with so much instability in the, in the enterprise, um, Dr. Robbins, myself, that's, that's what we need to do is look at the what ifs. Right. Um, you know, you need to kind of go down to the worst case scenarios and start to work back and say, well, where can we divert? We don't want to get to this. So how do we how do we manage right. it? So I think there were a lot there was a lot of conversations and a lot of um, foresight or work, you know, what our future may could look like. And this was certainly one of them. But there were others that we were examining. You can't wake up in this industry one day and hope that you're still at the table, because if you haven't done the work and you haven't positioned yourself correctly, when a weird thing happens and that happened to us that right. morning, that Friday morning. Right. We had to have we had to have things that we could put into motion very quickly and make it happen. So, um, again, I, I don't want to give the impression we, we were always very committed to the Pac-12 and and we thought that that was the best for, you know, at that time for all of us to try to hold together, get to another place where we could reconstitute some things. Um, but it just wasn't feasible. It just wasn't going to happen. And uh, respect every one of those schools. Ultimately, we were making, trying to hold together, but we are paid and we are hired. We are here at the University of Arizona, like all of my great colleagues in the Pac-12, to make the decisions that are best for the universities that we represent. And in this case, it's University of Arizona. And so we always were tracking that first and foremost. Uh, again, I want to keep the rivalry. Uh, having um, Arizona State involved is tremendous. I think it it got to the right point. So um, I don't think, you know, that, that again, looking back on the what ifs or not, or are you tethered or not, you know, again, I think it worked out very well and uh, it continues a longstanding ter terrific rivalry. Right. Now talk a little bit about your uh, relationship. We've talked about this before with President Robbins, because I think the thing, at least from afar, that uh, is very impressive is no leaks ever come out of Arizona. It seems like Jed Fish got hired and People found out that Jed Fish was hired that day. Tommy Lloyd was hired. People found out about it that day or maybe the night before or whatever. You guys do an amazing job of keeping things under wrap. Talk a little bit about your relationship with President Robbins and just how that works. Well, again, Dr. Robbins and I came at the same time, um, but but Dr. Robbins did not hire me. Um, right. you know, a previous president did, and it was shortly after that that there was a decision to make a change. And um I, I, you know, again, I think we have a great relationship where we communicate a lot. Um, there's a great passion we both have for obviously for athletics. Uh, Dr. Robbins has a great passion for everything that goes on this campus. And as I've always said, he wants everything to be excellent and he is willing to share his time and his energy with all of us on the campus outside of athletics. But athletics is certainly a, a very important part of what we do. And uh, he invests his time, energy and passion. In, and that's that's great. So, I, I you know, again, as I said earlier, um, and, and it's the job of, of Mike, you and others, you know, that that uh, and the media that really want to drive that and look for the leak or look for the way to kind of break a story. And that's important. I, I respect that. You got to do your work. Um, I, I also don't think sometimes that serves well. And right. I think we have that philosophy that we will hunker down, um, analyze the information factually, really go through it in, in, a, in a deep way. Um, and then make really critical, good decisions. Um, they're hard decisions. They may not make everyone happy um, or they may not you know, be what someone thinks is the right way to go. But uh, we, we don't take those lightly and we try to contain that. And, and I think that's been beneficial as we go. It's not to try to box people out. But I think sometimes those leaks, again, can really impact the good decision that you want to make. Right. Um, I, I, I don't want the chance to get Jed Fish here and what he has done 
to be blown up because there's a leak and somebody get, you know that's when people get skittish and they're out right i don't want that 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 direction with tommy lloyd we were headed to somehow get derailed because of this 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 rush to to break it or to to get the story out before something you know or in the middle of it when somebody right. goes well, i'm done hey right at the altar but no i, I don't want to get married today so th i think that can happen and so very sensitive to it and um but you know focused on making good decisions and analyzing all those things are better when it's really contained all right let's talk about it. some arizona football here because we got the first game here saturday all right i gotta say dave i'll be honest with you when jed fish was hired I had no clue what to make of it. I thought it was a bizarre hire. I had no clue what to make of it. But you know that I'm a big fan of Dave Hickey. So I was like, listen, let's find out what's going on here. Dave, everything this man said in his introductory press conference, nobody will out recruit us. We won't get every kid, but nobody's going to outwork us. We're going to strip this thing down, build it from the top up. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to engage fan alumni. Everything he said he was going to do, Dave, he is done. And in this day, uh, an era of college athletics, of media, you rarely see that. And I think that's why this community has really rallied behind him. Plus, you see the improving results on the field. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, and I think go back to pro the process. Where, where were we? We weren't in a good spot. Right. We needed to change everything. We needed to change the narrative around our program. We needed to completely break it down those were the conversations that we finally you know with jay is like this is a different hire now this is kind of this doesn't right. follow a lot of the trains um but it was really about again an engaging guy tons of passion um really would not let it fail quite frankly right. um someone we want to work with invest in at all levels you know that that was what it was about i mean those are the feelings right away and so and and you're right and, and we're all aligned. We're all mm -hmm. aligned. Hey, it's going to be hard, uh, but let's not just put new windows in the house and hopefully next year we can be pretty good. And then all of a sudden we find out that those windows were bad and they're starting to mold and we've got to replace them again. You know, we had to strip it down. We had to build it. This has great foundation, great history, tradition. The bones are good, but we had to build the house back up the right way, step by step by step. And I think we've done two years of that. Are we done? Absolutely not. I think maybe we're on to uh, the patio and some of the, you know, the, the, the good things around the edge, maybe, you know, to right. finish it off. But uh, I think with the structures built now, we, we we're in much better position to, to manage the ups and downs, the difficult times, uh, you know, that we, we can wade through that stuff now. And, uh, right. and again, go back to Jed is relentless on everything he does, recruiting, coaching, you know, developing kids, relationships, all of it, it, it takes 100% all in, in in college football and in all of our sports, really. That's where the success comes. You can't decide, I, I don't really want to do that, or we're focused on this only. You have to be all in all the time on everything. And that's what Jed has done. That's the type of staff he's built. And that's the type of the program that we built with the support staff inside of it. So um, I don't know. Those are the key things. And, and uh, I'm excited we're talking about football, too. I'm excited we're talking about this weekend and football. And the great year we're going to have, you know, um, all that other stuff we're going to put over here on the side. We're going to celebrate what's going on right now. How does it work when uh, when Jed comes to you? Because he's been very I mean, you ask about Dave Heke, your president Robbins, and he you know, he's he's obviously very happy with everything. How does it work when he comes and says, you know, I could maybe use another coach here. Or I could use another uh, trainer or staff. How does that conversation go? Well, you know, again, uh, Jed and I have an open conversations all the time. I mean, um, whether that even just happens at practice or it's, you know, it, we, we meet regularly. We have a kind of a standing meeting. We're always talking about issues. I think Jed's good about, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Um, he's good at hearing my perspective of, OK, how do we fit that in from a, a budget standpoint? Don't want to limit anybody. I, I don't think we've ever really said no to anything. We've tried to build the program back. Might do it in a different way or take multiple steps. And I think we have an open conversation, open dialogue about that stuff. Right. And we get to a pretty good spot. Um, uh, you know, we have some administrative support around the, that connects both, you know, Jed and I are uh, often, you know, doing a lot of different things that, 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 you know, when's the right time to bring us together, when issues are happening or we need to pivot a little bit, you know, we've got good administrative people 
kind of in the middle working really hard to keep things rolling along. So there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of conversation. It's a very open uh, program. Right. I think that's healthy. So um, and there's a good respect on both sides. Right. You know, hey, you can't do everything um, and everything doesn't always work. Everything isn't the best. Or if, if you know, there's always easy comparisons. Well, they're doing it. We have to do it. Oh, really? But we do these three things that they don't do. You know, you, you've got to find your sweet spot and what you can invest in to make the biggest impact. You just can't do it because everybody does it. But uh, basically, Jed's always about, too, what's right for the student athletes? What's right for his players? What is the commitment we make to those families? How do we take care of them as football players, as people? That, you know, their academics is incredibly important. How do we make sure that's right? And that's fundamentally where he starts. And so he and I are in the same wavelength there. And that makes it that makes it work really well. Right. How does it work then with the uh, obviously you're you're uh, with Nike right now. Does that um, does that uh, how, how does that look going forward into a new conference? Um, well, again, we'll our apparel, apparel and, uh, um, you know, footwear and uniforms, those kind of things are, are important. We've had a great partner with Nike. Um, we're going to begin more deeply that process of renewing that or looking at that arrangement. Right. Um, and, and so we've just had the early stages of that. Uh, that doesn't change from conference to conference. That stays with the institution. Uh, but I think it's an important component. It's a big part of our operation. All of the, the apparel we have, the sideline gear, the uniforms, the footwear and the performance of that footwear uh, are critically important. The branding of of the your apparel and footwear company are important or the brand the power of that brand is important um and, and but there's a financial component to that too both you know hard dollars and, and equipment that are, that is provided the service levels all of those are important so it's not a one-stop right hey, this is what we need kind of check the box thing but a very important piece of, of who we are and we've been with nike for a long time they've been great to us good people I think we, you know, again, it's time to reboot that thing and look for ways to grow. We need to grow in the area. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to be kind of be looking at as we uh, look with Nike and, and see where they are as we go forward. All right, Dave, before I got to ask, because people ask me every single time, any updates on the west side of the stadium and um, any any time frame for any of those? Come on now. Um, okay, so you heard this yesterday a little bit. I know people have started to talk more about it, but I'm uh, we were very close before COVID, um, and then COVID hit, and that really you know threw the big curveball at us. So, um, as I've said, I want to do something on the west side. We need to do something. We did the east side to a degree, and have renovated the concourse area. I think it's, it's you know it's beautiful. Um, services our students and our fans on that side much, much better. We've got a great north side to the stadium, the north end zone, the Lowell Stevens facility, the Sands Club, you know, but we've got to address the west side. Those first 30 rows are still the original 30 rows of the stadium when it was right. built. So, um, but as I said yesterday, I think we need to look deeper about an entire athletic district. How can we, um, yes, address these specific areas that we need improvements on, but how do they build on other things around our, our neighborhood, so to speak here? I think there's a very high level um, multi-use um, retail living entertainment district that can be developed here and, and, and help generate uh, resources that we can utilize to help invest in our facilities here. They right. want to move our facilities that want to you know, enhance this overall area that can help everybody, can help our neighborhoods around here uh you know help, help just help the vitality of the area uh, make it a great game day er experience for all of our events uh, right. i envision you know high level you know outstanding you know multi-use facilities the living uh arrangements you know different different things that that could be a lot of a lot of fun now so that's throwing a lot of spaghetti on the wall so to speak but I, that's where our vision is at the same time, not losing track of there are some key areas we have to address, starting with the west side of that stadium. As I said before, it's very complicated. It's old. It's a very tight footprint. We have dorms right on the back side of that. It's not like you can just blow everything out and start over. Uh, it's a very unique footprint that makes it even harder to do and, and quite frankly, a little bit more expensive. So uh, long answer, um, but there's, there's a lot there. And I know that that west side's important. It's not going to happen next year, but we're going to be spending some time as we enter into the Big 12 thing. It, it, 
we have to address some areas in our football stadiums, one of them, along with a number of things. When people start to see what the investment, the commitment, what we need to do to, to stay relative and very competitive in the Big 12, there's some things we're going to have to address. Right. By the way, somebody says south of six could be bulldozed. No, it couldn't. I live south of six. Don't bulldoze that, Dave. We don't like that. We don't like that idea right no, there. That, and that's not the intent here. I don't want to, the intent is to 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 truly um, create a really vibrant um, athletic area, retail and, and restaurant and entertainment area and a living area that all works together. And I think those can be done. It's been proven at a lot of other places. This kind of is the pro model more to, you know, more so. Uh, it's not a new concept. They don't, don't, you know, right. I, we were so focused on raise some money, knock it down, build it. I, I think we've got to think bigger and broader and really um, while addressing some, like I said, some of these short-term things, but we, right. we've got to think way bigger than that. All right, Dave, going to let you sign off right here. But again, I think I speak for a lot of people though. Um, very proud on how you guys handled this. Um, you got Arizona in the best spot possible while not obviously burning any bridges or anything like that. And again, you just, I think you guys just did a great job here and we're lucky to have you and president Robbins right there doing your thing. Well, appreciate it. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be the athletic director. I mean that. And, uh, uh all I want to try to do every day is make, uh, make this program better and, and, you know, make our alums and our fan base really proud. It's an, it's an exciting time here. Um, isn't it going to be fun? I mean, again, we, such great history and, and, and tradition and memories of the Pac-12, and we'll celebrate that. But, you know, we got this great opportunity to go. New rivalries, new 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 uh, memories, uh, new places to go. I know I was talking to our student athletes at, last night. They're so excited about new things. Um, they really look at it as a positive um, while maintaining some of our relationships. So, anyways, exciting time, Mike. I didn't mean to extend it too much longer, but love it. And, uh, again, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to serve this university and our great fan base. Dave, can we get a back the A before you sign off? Bear down, go Cats, back the A. My man, the great Dave Hickey. Dave, again, really appreciate your time, buddy. All right, Dave Hickey right there. Uh, that was cool. Thank you, Jacob Franklin. All right, Dave, again, big time, big time thanks to Dave Hickey right there because that was that's why we like Dave Hickey. Such a great deal right there. Now i got to get a couple reads out of the way first right here. The great Jacob Franklin sent me this, and let's see. What do we have first? All right, wink. Well, actually, hold on a second here. Uh, my, uh, hmm, the heck did this go? All right, uh, just a second here. Um, yeah, I don't hold on a second. I do apologize about this. All right. You know what? We're going to go a little bit out of order right here. Shady Rays. Here's the deal. Again, you look at me, you're thinking to yourself, that dude's not cool. You're right. I'm not cool. But Shady Rays is here to help people like me. And at the same time, also help me look good. And the great thing about it is if you don't uh, love your Shady Rays, you can exchange their pair or return them within 30 days. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the Shades rated at five stars by over 250,000 people. And, and real quick, real quick, and we got a really cool announcement here for all of you guys. We need to talk a little bit about BetMGM. Now, here's the deal. Right now, you might say to yourself, man, I really like to be able to bet on something. And BetMGM is here for you. And you can get all kinds of good stuff. Again, the great thing about BetMGM is you got a great deal now going on where you can get, you know, uh, you put down uh, uh, 10 bucks, you can get uh, 1500 bucks back if your bet loses. Now, you got to go to BetMGM again. Um, I don't know why, but my screen just froze right here. That's not good. Um, but again, check it out. BetMGM. Um, if we could hear the disclaimer from Shane Diefenbach, maybe I can find this. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-522-4700, Nevada. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Kansas, Nevada, New York, or Ontario. All right, sorry about that. They were a little bit clunky on my part, but let's now talk about it. We've got Ben White in here as well, the great Ben White, coming in here from Tucson, Arizona, currently right here. Ben White is uh, Ben White's a good dude. Ben White, what is going on with Ben White right now? 
What's going on with Ben White? What's going on is it's football season. I'm fired up after hearing Hickey today, Mike. Um, yes. Hold on a second. I just figured. Yes, I'm very excited to see you. The great thing about Dave Hickey, too, is that Dave Hickey is a man that just gets it, Ben. And the great thing about Dave Hickey is he's not going to tell you something that you don't. Uh, he's not going to. Uh, he's not going to say something that he doesn't really mean, not going to do any of that. And he led us from the very beginning right there. And that was the great thing about all of this is that he knew he had a plan. At the end of the day, the plan was you ended up in the Big 12. I get that you want you didn't want to burn any bridges. I totally get all of that. But at the same time, though, you also don't want to do something where, I mean, you know, let's just be honest here. You're, uh, you know, you don't want to, again, you don't want to burn those bridges. And he did just that. Yeah, when there's opportunities in front of you, you have to take them. And we saw this two years ago. He said it earlier. It started with UCLA and USC leaving. And ultimately, at that point, you could decide to sit back and say everything's going to be all right. We've been a part of the Pac-12 for so many years. It'll work itself out. Or we can put our foot down and take action and figure out what's really best for the program. He's done that. I did like the quote, though, where he talked about um, Jed Fish's recruiting and he was talking about conference realignment where he said you can't just do something because everyone else does. You have to do what's best for yourself. And that's what this program has done. I'm fired up, man. And, you know, and let's be honest here. I'm excited. Everybody else out there knows, too. I wanted to go to the Big 12. Um, I understand you've got a lot of uh, you've got a lot of, um, you know, memories, a lot of stuff like that. But at the end of the day. These were a lot of stadiums that he talked about it where you didn't have a ton of people in there. You've got a ton of people in the Big 12. These games are always going to be uh, proliferated right there or populated, sorry. And there's going to be essentially, I mean, full crowds, very much akin to McHale. And I think that's the cool thing about all of this, though, is that I think you're seeing a fan base that is going to be kind of a direct reflection of yourself to a certain extent, Ben. For sure. And when you look at just the conference as a whole, I mean, we've talked plenty about basketball, but football as a whole with some of these programs that you're adding, especially on the East Coast. I know a school like UCF doesn't get as much attention these days, but just the way these programs play football, it's going to be competitive. And every single year, you're going to be in a spot where if you're Arizona, if you're one of these other schools in the Big 12 conference where you more or less just roll the dice and you see what happens, you know, one through what, six, 15, 14 we're at right now? So, I mean, it could go either way. And I think that's what's so cool about joining this conference is you have that new exposure. You have definitely, from a fan standpoint, the opponents you're going to be playing, I think there's a lot more passion. I, I think there's a lot more competition to be had. And quite honestly, I think it's going to be a whole lot more fun to watch. Going to be a lot more interesting, you know, when you're watching Arizona play, um, you know, Texas Tech, versus Arizona going up to Berkeley to pay, play Cal. We love the Pac-12, but let's just be honest here. I mean, these competitions are, are going to be a lot more exciting to watch, and uh, Arizona's going to be in a great spot. And every single year, um, you don't know what you're going to get. And I think this year we're going to slowly learn that, as I know you and me, Mike, will be watching a lot of Big 12 football this year. That's for sure. And that's a big part of this. Going to the Big 12, we're going to have a lot of Big 12 segments on this show because, again, we and, you know, just everywhere, we're going to be talking a lot of Big 12, a lot of college athletics right there because, obviously, we're going to the Big 12. Now, we have a big announcement here, a big, big announcement right here. I will want to uh, – I'd like to uh, put this up right now. Anthony Gimino. You might know Anthony Gimino. He is joining PHNX, our guy, Anthony Cimino. He is going to be writing two to three times a week along with putting out a newsletter. Anybody in Tucson knows the great Anthony Cimino. And not only on top of that, he is one of the best dudes out there. You don't really get a, uh, you don't really get much, uh, much better than AG. You and I have known AG for a long time, Ben White. This is a blockbuster edition right here. This is an A++++++ edition. We've known Jamino. Well, I've known Jamino for about six years. You've known him forever. We used to work with him over on the radio doing pre- and post-game shows, so I'm sure he'll be chiming in um, when we do those shows with Brad and, and Schuster. And yeah, man, I'm excited. Jamino is a straight shooter. He is connected. He knows everything going on with Arizona Athletics. He will tell it how it is. And most importantly, Mike, he is entertaining. Not only is he entertaining, he's a person that also is annoyed somebody somewhat by me. I know get in line right there. Who There's a it? lot of people.
Unmute, Mike. Oh, sorry, I muted my mic there. But um, Anthony Anthony Jamino is about as big as it gets. He's a big time addition right there. Good dude and knows football. Claire Wyant said exactly just right there. Do apologize about that. All right, now one other thing right here, Ben. I got to tell you about Wink. W Y N K. Now here it is: a seltzer with a wink of THC. Get it? Just a wink. I see what you did there. That's very funny. That's very funny. Now, here's the deal. Available in either 2.5 milligrams or 5 milligram cans. You can find Wink right here in Arizona. Look for Wink in all Sunday goods dispensaries in the Valley and Botanica dispensaries in Tucson. They're now in 12 states nationwide and even recently launched online ordering and home delivery to about a dozen others. To uh, find the fastest way to get your hands on one, go to drinkwink.com. Check it out. Ben White, you know that was funny. Mike Luke, the comedian, as usual. Of course, it was funny, man. All right, let's talk a little bit of Arizona football here before we sign off. Um, now, Arizona, we're going to be there. Anthony Cimino is going to be up in the press box as well with us. We've confirmed this, Ben White. Yes, we have. I'm very excited to sit next to Cimino and bug him for three hours. And Anthony's going to be ready for it. I look for this game, though. I want 100% need Arizona to destroy uh, NAU. We're going to make up for a life, uh, well, not a lifetime, but a couple years of, uh, a couple years of, uh, let's just say, uh, trolling here. I expect a massive, uh, a massive beatdown. As a matter of fact, I'd like to see something in that 70 to 7 range, if possible, Ben White. Yeah, I think if uh, we got friends out there gambling on this game, which I'm sure we do, you would love to see Arizona hit the over. Um, no, no doubt about that. But uh, crazy what two years can look like, right? I mean, two years ago, this team you know, lost to NAU. This team was in a world of hurt. And, and now you're in a position where you know, you've talked about it all week. You've talked about it throughout the show all summer where this team is kind of at that halfway point when it comes to this rebuild. I mean, offensively, you're bringing Delora back. I think the key in this opponent is you're obviously not going to show too much on the offensive side, but you just want to see the team come together and just look fluid. I think last year at times you bring in a new quarterback, you got a lot of new guys, especially on the offensive side, you know, you're loaded at receiver. You lost a couple of guys, but just be fluid, you know, be consistent, go out there, dominate, do what you're supposed to do and win the battle at the line of scrimmage. And I think that's exactly what you're looking for. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, what some of these new guys look like all the new faces on defense, especially that defensive line. Um, you, you've got guys coming in from Georgia, Michigan, et cetera. Um, the depth is definitely better than it's been. And I think when you look back at the last couple of years and really the last decade, uh, going back to even maybe 2014, 2015, this is easily Mike, the most excited I've been for Arizona football in probably 10 years. Yep. It's something we're not like Keck where we have ASU and we're just uh, we're bummed out about our president making bad decisions. There's none of that involved here because we have a president and an athletic director that know exactly what they're doing, Ben White. And this is something that we can't take for granted right here, especially when we see our friends up north. We cannot. We've got to back the A. We've got to compete. And it's time to go bowling this year, my friends. Now, uh, one thing, it is now time for the Bet MGM pick of the week here. All right. Now, I am going to go a little bit off script right here because I want to make some money today. This is for all of you out here. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to pick Nebraska to win tonight straight up against Minnesota. I feel very, very good about this. That's where I'm going, Ben White. Would this have anything to do with you being a Nebraska fan or perhaps being from the state of Nebraska? No. I like Nebraska to win this game, Ben White. Fair enough. Fair enough. What is it? Do you so? Do you want to go with that? Was your bet MGM pick of the week? My man, that's tough. My bet MGM pick of the week. I think I'm gonna go. I think somehow Florida is gonna upset Utah tonight. I just don't feel great about it. I think I know it's in Salt Lake City. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but I think somehow Florida is gonna come out and you know, win by seven. So I, I would, I'd throw your money on Florida. All right. Now I've got a couple more read, got a couple more reads right here. Um, and first and foremost, man, 
you, this is the time to become a PHNX diehard. And not only is it time to become a PHNX diehard, it is, this is the best time. Go to Go PHNX. You can get all these shirts and hats for free, or excuse me, for free. No, for $24, you can get those hats and uh, or those shirts. Those things are awesome right there. They're available now. And this is a good time right now to become the... Uh, this is a good time right now to become a PHNX diehard. Again, check it out. Um, and uh, again, great time. Anthony Jamino signing up. What other better time is there to be able to become a PHNX diehard than right now, Ben White? It's always a great time to become a PHNX diehard, Mike Luke. Can't think of a better time because the time is now. Our, yep, the time is now. And again, really, really appreciate all of you guys out there. Um, I will say this. We need uh, uh, this. This is a time that uh, Arizona fans need to be out there. And let's be honest here. We've been to Arizona games where there's 55,000 people and it is awesome. And not only is it awesome, it is an inter it is a very, very difficult environment for other people to be in, mainly because, well, let's be honest here. Um, there's more fans there, but when there's not more fans, then it becomes a little bit more uh, easy for teams like NAU to be able to hop in there. And we don't want that to happen. Everybody's got to show up here. We got to show up. We got to support the Cats. And as Dave Hickey said, we got to back the A. Yeah, listen, when you're in a spot where Arizona is probably, you know, 60, 70 percent of the way through this rebuild and just what you've gone through as a program and where you are right now, you need some things to go your way. And there's only so much you can control. Attending the games is 100 percent controllable. If you can go out there, support this team. I know folks have been out there throughout the years, especially when Arizona has been a little bit more competitive. Um, thinking back eight years ago, I think coming up this week, Mike, it was college game day when Arizona was rolling and rocking with Rich Rod playing UCLA. There were 60,000 people at the stadium. It was awesome. You know, so if we can get back to those days if we can get some consistency. And it looks like based on what you've been talking about and what Dave Hickey's even talked about, a lot of season ticket sales are out there. So I'd imagine you're going to see an uptick in attendance, um, updated concessions, games later at night. It's not going to be too hot probably going to be a better environment than you're accustomed to seeing and let's be quite honest the product on the field should be getting better and better so get in now like we say mike i mean we talk about this all the time with our friends over there at the uh, the suns and cardinals don't don't become a suns fan uh, uh, right after kd joins get in now while the movement is not quite as hot because the iron it's going to get hot my friend the best way to put that is this if you didn't back the a when we stink don't back the A now, although still show up to the game. Yes, exactly. All right. Now, uh, before we sign off here, Keck, by the way, you're saying it's too hot, Mike. That is, a that is a defeatist ASU mentality right there that we will not go for. All right. Now, one other thing, though. Let's say that you want to watch some of these games right here. You got all kinds of different stuff right here. Fubo TV, 140 plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. Events coming up. You got college football, you got the NFL, you got Red Zone, US Open, tennis, all of that. Ben White, a huge tennis fan, by the way. Not many people know this, but so you can watch all your college football and the NFL with Fubo. Go to www.fubotv.com slash. Uh, well, DNVR, and to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro right here. So again, check it out. Fubo is a very, very, um, very good, uh, very good avenue, even for our friend Keck, who has been very mean today, but we don't care. All right. Now, I got to thank Dave Hickey. Uh, Dave Hickey has already uh, texted me. Uh, Dave. <laughs> But uh, Dave Hickey's the man. Really appreciate it. Had a few issues today. That's on my end. Um, I do apologize. But we will be back with you tomorrow at 1230, getting you ready, getting you the predictions ready. Hopefully, we're also talking about an ASU loss as well. But for the great Ben White, who will be with us tomorrow and on the postgame show Saturday, I am merely Mike Luke and Jacob Franklin behind the scenes. Thank you a ton to everybody out there. You guys have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast.